Good morning. We welcome you to worship at Peace United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or wherever you are on life's journey or wherever you are watching us from, you are most welcome here. We continue to do our streaming worships until we know it is safe to be back in our building, but we do have an exciting announcement coming, which is that on September 13th, which is two weeks from today, we will be having an outdoor worship service on the yard outside of Peace Church. You can come and bring lawn chairs and your blankets. Please be masked and be aware of social distancing while we were there, while we are there, but it will be a chance for us to get to be with one another, even if we can't have our normal type of worship service together. That service again is September the 13th at 10:15. I now welcome you into a time of quiet reflection as we gather ourselves through the playing of a singing bowl. Let us center. Let us begin our service with a time of prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you call to us through blowing in the pine trees. You call to us with bird song. You call through us through the moon and the early morning sunrise, and we, your people, listen. We open our hearts to you this day, ready to worship you and to allow your word to speak in our hearts. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
The scripture reading for today is from the book of Romans in the New Testament, chapter 12, beginning with verse 9. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, Feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For, Paul says, for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And thus ends our scripture reading for today. I am a list maker. If you walked into my home office right now, you'll see sitting on the right hand of my desk a weighted down pottery piece filled with paper clips. And under that, you'll see a pile of lists. I begin every Tuesday morning, which is the beginning of my work week, with the lists. Lists for the day, lists for the week, lists for the home, lists for office, lists for groceries. By the time I started my sermon on Thursday afternoon of this week, I realized that I had only tackled nine of my 24 items still on the list. Still left were needing to buy communion supplies for our outdoor worship. Still needing to contact a couple who I'm doing premarital counseling with to reschedule our next meeting. Still needing to talk to our CNS director, Lisa, about whether I should be the one to order disposable masks or whether she should. And then I have at the bottom of every list that relates to church, consider nebulous new ideas. Some items carry over from week to week, things which I found require the least amount of urgency, stuff that I don't have to attend to until October or November, but things that I have in mind. Some items are just relatively simple. And then they end up being the things that I keep forgetting, like sending a graduation card with a check in it to my nephew, 
who graduated from high school in June, which was almost three months ago. But lists help organize me and focus me, and they also remind me what I haven't gotten to yet. And you know the best part of the list? The best part is being able to check something off the list. I always feel such a sense of accomplishment when I get to put a little check in the box next to it, or when I just go crazy and draw a whole line through it. Because I love knowing that I got something done. I love knowing that I accomplished something. I confess that sometimes I even write down really easy tasks just for the thrill of checking them off my list. You know, something like check email or have your morning granola bar. The scripture that we're focused on this morning is Paul's letter to the people in Rome. And it's all about lists, or at least this part of scripture is. In fact, in my Bible, the title for it is Marks of a True Christian, as if it were a checklist that we can check and create, and that once we're done, we can check off the list and move on. It has things that say, let love be genuine. And I read that and say, yep, I gave Grayson a hug when I sent him off for school this week, and I really meant it. Ching! Be ardent in spirit. And I say, I talked up the community of this church for at least over an hour last week to someone who inquired about us through Facebook Messenger. So I've got that one taken care of for this week. Check it off. Contribute to the needs of saints. Boom. Our family made a charitable donation to GoFundMe, set up for a high school friend who had fallen on hard times. But then the list gets a little more complicated. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Well, crud, how am I going to cross these off my list? Especially my new YouTube troll who keeps leaving me messages in all caps on our worship service comments condemning me because ladies can't preach. Live peaceably with all. Well, now I could do that, except that it might include snakes and frogs. Because if that's the case, then I won't be able to do that one. Scriptures like this are enough to make me then want to close my Bible quietly and pretend that I didn't read that chapter. Because I don't think I will ever, ever make it to being a dutiful Christian if I have to do this stuff every single day. I am simply too human and too broken and too fragile, and I'll have to keep the list updated all the time. Many of you may feel some of those same restraints, those same requirements when you read the book of Romans. The sense that we are each so far, far away still from the kingdom of God. And that sometimes it seems that list is never, ever going to be finished. But let's back up the train here a little bit. Let's look at this scripture from a larger scope. There are times when we have been taught to view the Bible as only one big book of instructions. As if it is God's rule book. And it doesn't help that there are some folks who give Christianity a pretty bad name when they pound their Bibles and say that unless we follow certain rules, God will accept us. But that if we discard others, 
that we will be condemned to the fires of hell. So already we might feel some pressure when we stumble upon this text. But what would happen if we just shifted our focus slightly and we remembered the teachings of Jesus first as the lens through which we read Paul's list. Jesus, the one who reminded us that first and foremost, love is the greatest commandment and the greatest imperative. And that means that God also loves us immensely, hugely, beyond all human understanding. God made a way to us and continues to reach out to us daily because we are loved that much. And so is our enemy. And so as we make our way into Paul's list, let's read the list from that place of trust, that place from assurance. We made the difficult decision this week to send Grayson back to school rather than keeping him at home in his eighth grade year. And I, being his mother, stewed and stewed, chewing my nails as we tried to make this difficult decision in the midst of this pandemic. And being uncertain whether what we were doing was right or wrong. I imagine that many, many other families and parents and grandparents and caregivers are asking themselves these very same questions. And then we have our teachers and our school administrators and our bus drivers and our custodians who don't have the option of whether or not they can go back. And so they ask the same questions, I'm sure. Will we be safe today? How safe can we manage to be? Will our kids be okay? What's the most emotionally healthy decision for us each and every day? And as I sent Grayson off to school Tuesday morning with his mask and his Purell, I found myself calling out reminders to him. Remember to keep your mask on at all times. Remember to wash your hands often. Remember to introduce yourself to the younger students. Remember to say thank you and please. Turn in your planner. Don't forget your lunch. Be kind. I love you. In a way, it's like the Apostle Paul's list, a little. Like the list you repeat to your children because you're worried about them. You want them to live into the things that you have taught them. The list you offer after you're already certain that your children know that you love them. That's Paul's way. That's what this kind of list is about. He's not telling the people what they need to do to achieve God's love. God already loves them. Paul is reminding them how someone who continues the work of Jesus behaves after they are already at peace, resting in their comfort as a disciple of Jesus. Paul says, next time your mother is pouring her heart out to you and you are only half listening, remember, let love be genuine. Paul says, when that person that irritates you with every fiber of your being comes and asks an intrusive question that they sincerely want the answer to, remember, love one another with mutual affection. Paul says, as you run into the grocery store for milk on your way home from work, 
and the person in front of you seems to be not maintaining social distancing, nor wearing a mask while he checks his grocery list against his coupons, remember to extend hospitality to strangers. Paul says, the next time that you run into that person who told an untrue story about you, remember to overcome evil with good. Because we already know that Jesus loves us and we already know that we are to love. The theologian Barbara Brown Taylor said in a lecture on this scripture that we should consider this list a list about worship. The kind of worship that we offer every day, every minute, whether we are feeling it or not. The kind of worship that happens at the grocery store or at work or at school or on Facebook or when we are cooking dinner this is everyday praise and sacrifice, everyday song and confession, everyday passing the peace and sharing the cup, everyday worship, everyday ritual. This is the way that we practice our faith. Paul gives his list to the people who already knew how beloved they are as a reminder for how to practice their faith every single day. It's easy to miss that sometimes because how we spend our days is how we practice our faith. Eugene Peterson's translation of the Bible, the message, sums Paul's message up in a way that I love. It's so simple. He says, let love be genuine. Love from the center of who you are. That's the gist of it. Knowing that you are beloved, pass that love on. As I was preparing for my sermon this week, I reread a sermon that I had printed out and saved by a colleague of mine named Kurt Borgman. Kurt is the pastor at Manchester Church of the Brethren, and I think he is one of the best preachers that I have ever heard. And so every week, he does me a favor, along with a couple other people, and he sends his sermons from the previous week. And they are my Tuesday morning devotionals. And for the best of the best of those sermons, I put them in a file based on the book of scripture that he was preaching on so that I can remind myself and read them again. This is a story that I'm sharing with you that is Kurt's story, a story that he told when he preached on this very same scripture in 2008. And it is so perfect for what we're talking about today that I want to share it with you directly from the way he wrote it. So again, these are his words and not mine. He says, some years ago, I was at a department of motor vehicles office in a busy suburban setting. The lines were long and I was waiting for my number to be called. A woman came in with her sons sat down behind me. The boys were probably five, seven, and eight years old. They were full of energy. And their mother tried to keep them under control, but they moved rapidly from one thing to another, first testing the water fountain to see how high it could squirt water, then getting all the textbooks or the clipboards from the information desk then climbing over and under all the chairs, and so forth. Their mother handled the situation with humor and good grace. But finally, things went a little over the edge when one of the older boys shoved the youngest one. And the mother turned to the culprit and in a no-nonsense voice said quietly, 
if you do that again, I'm going to... And before she could finish her sentence, the third boy, the one who had not been involved in the altercation, chimed in, you're gonna hit him? You're gonna punch him? And with barely disguised hope, and he said this with barely disguised hope in his eyes. No, said his mother, that's not what we do in our family. And turning back to the son who was the cause of the trouble, she said, what I was trying to say before your brother interrupted me is that if you do that again, I'm going to walk with you all the way to your classroom every day when school starts. And I'm going to hug and kiss you at the door. And I'm going to put those little butterfly stickers on your lunch bag so that you always know how much I love you. And by then, the boy got a funny smile on his face and the younger brother burst out laughing and then they all started in about all the ways that the mother could show her love to this older son, ways that would embarrass him and all, the stick, and all the stickers that he wouldn't want on his lunch bag and so forth. Kurt went on to say, sitting one row in front of all of this, I couldn't help but smile to myself at the way that the mother had taken the conflict and rooted out the cause a desire for attention, and had met the need without a perpetuating of hostility. And I admired her too for her own self-knowledge and clarity about the center point of what she wanted for her family, as well as her commitment to intensifying her expressions of love rather than her expressions of anger. But what impressed me the most, Kurt said, wasn't just the way she used a lovingly humorous response to diffuse the conflict, but rather the fact that it struck me as genuine and real. It wasn't for show. It was about loving from the center and overcoming evil with good and paying attention to what was important. Isn't that a lovely story? I didn't witness it. I didn't write it. All the credit goes to my friend Kurt, who did share that story, but it so perfectly speaks to me of loving from the center of our hearts of letting go of worrying about all the things we have to do on the list and pulling it in to being about centering our hearts. And so yes, sometimes we have to pay attention to the list. By all means, we have to allow ourselves to be reminded of how we guide ourselves. But more importantly, the reality is that first we remember that we are held by God's love and that we can lean into that love and allow it to be genuine in each of us and let it root us and center us so that we may attend to the list of life not bound by the rules but comforted by the grace. Let us pray together. Holy God of grace. You have given us all of creation. You have given us the gifts that we may love others. And now it's our task. It's our turn with our hearts centered in your love to tackle the lists of what need to be done. 
the ways in which we reach out to help communities, communities struggling to overcome the effects of Hurricane Laura. Ways in which we act to work at reconciling and naming racial justice. Ways in which we practice safe hygiene in our community by wearing our masks, knowing that when we wear a mask, we could be helping another person. There are so many things that we could put on the list. Things that could continue to spread your love into this world. We pray today for your hope, for the love that you extend to those who are sick, to those who are grieving, May we know how to reach out. May we know how to be your hands and feet. We are your people, centered in your grace. Inspire us to be and do for others what you have given us. And we pray together in one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.